7. The USS Sachem For the past 25 years, a 175-foot ship has been rusting away near Petersburg, Kentucky by a small creek. The ship is hidden by trees and a pile of driftwood. It's only accessible by hiking across a large field and paddling out on the creek to see her up close and personal. The USS Sachem, PYC-25, or the Kelt, was built in 1902 by Pusey and Jones in Wilmington, Delaware, for a railroad executive named J. Rogers Maxwell. It was officially launched in April 1902. After sailing around the world, the ship was repurposed by the U.S. Navy for service and used to defend America against German subs in World War I. It was equipped with both depth charges and machine guns. It was a quick vessel that the Navy rented out to patrol the East Coast and fight U-boats. Then, in 1917, it was loaned to Thomas Edison as a research ship for government-funded experiments on defending against submarines. Thomas Edison was a prolific inventor who made many prolific contributions to the industrial world, including the invention of the light bulb. His ideas were a major force behind the modernization of electricity as a whole. When the United States entered into World War I, the Navy used private boats and yachts like Sachem to help defend the nation's shipping lines. With new armaments and sonar, the USS Sachem became an invaluable tool in the battle against Germany. Then, after the fighting, she was sold to a Philadelphia banker named Robert Miller. In 1986, the ship was purchased by a Cincinnati boat enthusiast who decided to take it home and restore it. He took it through the Erie Canal, the Great Lakes, the Mississippi River, and even the Ohio River. He eventually sailed it back to Boone County, Kentucky, where it now rests on Taylor Creek. The ship is a popular sightseeing destination for kayakers, who visit her and enjoy the scenery of the surrounding area on their tours. The infamous ghost ship has been featured in several Madonna music videos and even attended Ronald Reagan's relighting of the Statue of Liberty's torch. William Bailey, a 71-year-old New York resident, spent three summers on the ship back when she was called the Circle Line Sightseer. He says he had an amazing time and many fond memories of the experience. 6. The Boiling River Deep in the heart of the Peruvian Amazon lies a natural wonder that's left scientists speechless for years, the Boiling River. This unique geological phenomenon is a river that flows hot, with temperatures reaching as high as 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius in some places. The Boiling River, or the Chanay Timpishka, is a 4-mile-long, 6.4-kilometer river that snakes through the dense jungle. Surrounded by lush green vegetation and the sounds of exotic wildlife, the river is fed by underground hot springs, which heat the water to boiling temperatures. For many years, the locals believed the river was cursed, and they avoided it like the plague. But in recent years, scientists have been studying the Boiling River to try and understand its unique properties. What they've discovered is that the river is home to an ecosystem full of thermophilic organisms, including bacteria, fungi, and even some fish species that have adapted to the temperatures. These organisms have unique adaptations that allow them to thrive in the hot water, like heat-resistant enzymes and proteins. That being said, the Boiling River is still a dangerous place for the majority of organisms. Any living creature that isn't adapted to the high temperatures would not survive long in the water. The river can also pose a danger to humans, so it is extremely important to exercise caution when exploring the area to avoid getting burned. Scientists believe the Boiling River could hold the key to unlocking new medical treatments and even the secrets to the origin of life on Earth. The Boiling River is also a popular tourist destination, with visitors coming from all over the world to see its incredible natural wonder. Despite the dangers, the Boiling River remains one of the most fascinating and awe-inspiring natural wonders on our planet. As scientists continue to study this unique geological phenomenon, we may unlock even more secrets about the natural world and the origins of life as we know it. 5. Fire-tailed Titi Monkey Biologists saw significant progress between 2014 and 2015. They found over 400 new species in the Amazon rainforest during those short two years. Because the jungles are so dense and large, new discoveries are popping up all the time. It is basically a playground waiting for new discoveries to be uncovered. And there was one find that stuck out among the rest. Back in 2010, the fire-tailed titi monkey was spotted in a remote region of the Amazon in southern Brazil. But at the time, there wasn't enough data for biologists to properly categorize the animal. 
Though they were solitary and few in number, the creature's vivid red tails attracted a lot of attention. It's challenging to observe the monkeys since they spend most of their lives on trees at a great distance up from the ground. In pursuit of further data, researchers had to keep revisiting the jungle for years. They soon started to gain an understanding of the traits and behaviors of the monkeys in 2015. In honor of Brazilian primatologist Milton Thiago de Mello, the monkey was officially labeled Milton's Titi Monkey. Information about the species is still scarce, though. What we do know is that they mainly live alone and keep their distance, even from other primates. So far, it's taken a while to record concrete observations. Despite their difficult-to-access environments, if you were a researcher, how would you find out more about the TT monkey? Let us know in the comments down below, and subscribe while you're there. 4. Isolated Tribes of the Jungle Tribes living deep within the Amazon have little to no connection with the outside world, but the majority still know of the outside world's existence and its modern lifestyle. Unfortunately, illegal mining and logging practices have a detrimental effect on many of these tribes. But little is known about their way of life, according to anthropologists. These groups of people live in a solitary place, deep in the jungle. The Pripkura are among the most remote of these ethnic tribes. The Pripkura are believed to have only three members, two brothers, Pakii and Tamandua, and their cousin, Rita. They are one of the last uncontacted tribes in Brazil and have managed to stay isolated from the outside world despite the increasing encroachment of modern civilization into the rainforest. The Pripkura people live a traditional life, relying on hunting, fishing, and gathering for their survival. They have a deep connection to the forest and its resources, and their culture is intimately tied to the natural world. But the tribe faces multiple threats from illegal logging, mining, and ranching operations, which have destroyed much of their ancestral territory and made it difficult for them to survive. Despite these challenges, the Brazilian government has taken decisive steps to protect the Piripcura people and their land. In 1998, the government created a protected area for the tribe called the Piripcura Indigenous Territory. It covers over 460 square miles of forest and is strictly off-limits to outsiders. Efforts have also been made to monitor the Piripcura and ensure their safety. In 2018, a team of government officials and indigenous experts carried out a proof-of-life mission to confirm that the three members were still alive and well. The team was able to make contact with them briefly, but they respected the tribe's wishes to stay isolated and did not attempt to stay longer than needed. The plight of the Piripkura tribe highlights the growing need to protect the Amazon rainforest and its indigenous people. As the world becomes more and more interconnected, it is crucial that we respect the rights and autonomy of traditional communities like the Piripkura and work to preserve their way of life and the environment they depend so closely on. 3. La Corona La Corona is an ancient Maya location in the Peyton jungles of Guatemala. It was discovered in 1996 and later identified as the source of many limestone reliefs that have popped up on the international art market. The site's original name was Sac Nicte, which means white flower. It was also a court home that played a key role in the political history of the ancient Maya civilization. It was part of a large Maya kingdom that was ruled by a dynasty of Kanul rulers, or snake kings. They expanded their territory from their home city of Calakmul in Mexico by using La Corona as a relay center for precious stones and other goods from controlled sites farther south. It had a small but densely populated core area. La Corona and other sites like El Peru Huaca and Halmul were involved in a political conflict with another powerful Maya city, Tikal, which was officially conquered by Kanul in 562. La Corona also had connections to other Maya regions, such as the Central Lowlands and the Southern Highlands. It has many hieroglyphic texts that reveal important information about the culture of the Maya civilization and its political dynamics. Some of these texts refer to historical events that happened at other sites, like the accession of a new king at Kalakmul or the arrival of emissaries from faraway lands. Some also mention a date that corresponds to December 21st, 2012, which was the end of the 13th Bakhtun cycle in the Maya calendar. Many people believed it marked the end of the world. Luckily, we're still here. Despite its historical significance and archaeological richness, La Corona is still a secluded and inaccessible site in the Guatemalan jungle. Maybe one day we'll be able to visit. 2. Real-Life Tarzan 
In 2013, a remarkable story came from the jungles of Vietnam. A father-son duo, Ho Van Tan and Ho Van Lang, were discovered living in a treehouse for 40 years after escaping the war. They had no contact with the outside world during that time and even spoke their own language. The father, Ho Van Tan, was a soldier who fought in the Vietnam War. In 1972, he saw a bomb kill his wife and two of his sons. Traumatized by the loss, he took his only surviving son, Ho Van Lang, who was just two years old at the time, and ran into the jungle. And they just never came back. The duo survived by hunting animals and eating fruits and vegetables. They wore loincloths made of bark and used tools built from bamboo and stone. Father and son constructed a treehouse 20 feet six meters above the ground to avoid wild animals and floods. They also created several other huts around the area for storage and shelter. They had no idea the war had ended or the world had changed so much. The father never knew how to read or write, so he couldn't teach his son. Eventually, he couldn't speak any language other than their own. Didn't even know about electricity, cars, phones, or other modern inventions. The two lived in complete isolation and harmony with nature. They were found by locals who spotted them out in the forest. The duo was then brought back to civilization and reunited with their relatives. They received medical care and social assistance, but they had a hard time adjusting to the new environment and culture. Missed their jungle home and their simple way of life, the father and son became well known as the real-life Tarzans of Vietnam. Their story fascinated and inspired many people around the world. They proved that humans can survive in extreme conditions and overcome great tragedies. 1. Chicken Church the Chicken Church is a nickname for a unique building standing on a hill in the forest of Java, Indonesia. It's officially called Garija Ayam, which translates to Chicken Church in Indonesian. But it was not intended to look like a chicken. It was built by Daniel Alamsha, a Christian man who had a vision of a dove-shaped house for all kinds of people to worship in. Alamsha says he had the vision in 1988 after praying nightly. He saw a dove with white wings resting on top of a hill, and a voice apparently asked him to build a place where people of different faiths and backgrounds could come together and pray. He tried to ignore the vision, but he changed his mind after visiting Magalang, a town near the hill he saw in his dream. He believed it was a sign from God and decided to buy the land and get to work building. The construction started in 1992 and lasted for 15 years. Alamja used his own money and donations from friends and family to fund the project. He also hired local workers and volunteers. He designed the building himself based on his vision, but he admits that he is not exactly an architect and that he made some mistakes along the way. The result was a structure that looked a lot more like a chicken than a dove. The chicken church has seven floors total and can accommodate up to 5,000 people. It has a crown-shaped platform on its head where visitors can enjoy the view of the surrounding mountains and forests. It also has a basement that was once used as a rehabilitation center for drug addicts, prostitutes, and troubled youths. Alamja says he wanted to help people who were suffering and lost their way. The chicken church was never fully finished, thanks to financial problems and local opposition. It was abandoned in 2000 and has since become a popular tourist attraction. Many people visit the Chicken Church to take photos, explore its interior, or pray. Alamja says he's happy that his vision has become a reality, even if it's not what he originally imagined. Thanks for watching. Which jungle discovery was your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button on your way out. Bye.